showing slides on a wall, uh, flip cards in a kinescope, uh, to uh, the, the concept of uh, projecting and moving images on a screen. And uh, the early silent films, uh, part, of the, uh, part of the entertainment was that a filmmaker <clears throat> would go into a town and take movies of the local gas station owner, the local doctor, the local pharmacist, the grocer, and uh, everybody would stream to the, uh, would crowd into the movie theater on Saturday, Friday, and Saturday night, 
and uh, watch themselves on the screen and their viewers on the screen. Uh, but the films were silent. They didn't have a way of uh, synchronizing the sound with the films. So a variety of things were done. Uh, some of them, some of the things that were done was they would hire people to stand behind the screen with uh, tin cans and drums and noisemakers and uh, uh, whistles and sirens and whatever they could get a hold of, and they would try to follow the action on the screen and make noises that were appropriate. Uh, <clears throat> but that wasn't uh, really the greatest thing in the world, so uh, they decided that maybe having, uh, having some kind of music would work, so they got pianos. And in a small theater, a piano was just fine, but as they started to make these movie palaces that uh, sat, uh, you know, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 3,000 people, a uh, piano was not going to fill the auditorium with sound. So uh, somebody came up with the idea of using a pipe organ. Pipe organs make lots of noises in church, certainly loud enough in a church. But a pipe organ in a church just doesn't really uh, fill the needs of uh, accompanying a silent film. So Robert Hope Jones, the, the uh, precursor of the Wurlitzer Company, uh, started uh, coming up with the idea of making pipes and, and modifying a uh, church organ concept. So the console is the same, the keyboards are the same, the pedals are the same, and uh, the concept of uh, having pipes sitting on wind chamber is the same. But they decided to make funny noises rather than churchy sounds. And one of the uh, one of the things that they did was they uh, they used the concept of of a uh, tremolo instead of a straight church sound, adding vibrating the sound to change the frequency and the volume, and it made it a little more. Uh, the word was romantic. So these, uh, these, uh, uh, the, uh, the accompaniment for silent films went from piano to small orchestras, but for a large auditorium you needed a lot of, uh, a lot of musicians to fill up the, uh, the, the, the auditorium with sound. But a church organ modified into a theater organ was loud enough that you could hire one person. It was moving on to the depression, and money was tight. So the concept of putting in, yeah, an expensive organ, but you only had one employee to play it, was, uh, was an interesting concept. Uh, one of the things that they started to do with, uh, with the organs is they added sound effects. And uh, that leads to uh, the style in which Daryl plays, uh, where when you think about it, a theater organist is really quite an amazing character. Um, we knew he was a character. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl was a character. Uh, with with theater, with uh, church organ, with classical organ, the concept is to play the notes that are written exactly as they are written on the, on the sheet of paper. But with the silent films, they would send out a lead sheet, which is a, uh, a melody line, and they would suggest chords. But that was it, and it was up to the organist to come up with an arrangement. So what, what uh, Daryl is, uh, is doing, for instance, on the organ here is on the upper manual, he's playing the melody. On the lower manual, he's playing the accompaniment, the chords, like, like the accompanying guitar. On the, on the pedals, he's playing bass notes. He's generating the rhythm by alternating uh, the pedal notes and, uh, and uh, hitting the keyboards. Uh, and some of the pipe organs, a lot of the pipe organs in uh, theaters also had traps. They had drums, uh, bells, whistles, boat horns, sound effects galore. And uh, so uh, the, the instruments got more expensive, the artists became more talented, and it became a, a, a real thing in the, in the 20s and the 30s to 
how the million dollar organ, the million dollar Wurlitzer or Kimball or Robert Morton uh, in a theater and uh, have that as part of the show. Uh, another thing you have to realize about the, about the 1920s is that uh, central heating was not necessarily a thing in houses. Uh, so on a cold winter night, you had the stove in the kitchen, you might have had a potbelly stove in your house unless you were fairly rich. Uh, you, uh, you had very little in the way of entertainment. Radio was just coming into existence. Uh, people did have pianos, violins, and other instruments at home, and, and playing music at, uh, every night after dinner was, was certainly a thing. But on the other hand, for 50 cents or 65 cents, you could go to the local theater and you get organ music played when you come in. You get a couple of uh, cartoons or uh, short silence, the uh, Laurel and Hardy's, the, uh, the other, the other uh, uh, the, young, the Little Rascals, uh, those kind of uh, short films that ran about 20 minutes. Uh, you would get a newsreel. Remember, people didn't have TV, so you didn't know what was going on in the world except by reading the newspaper, which was kind of bland. But you could see the actual king and queen or, or, or the president or whoever uh, in motion on the, on the big screen, uh, of course, with subtitles, because there was no sound. Uh, but the organist would play through and accompany those films and make the appropriate dramatic music uh, for, the, uh, for the various films uh, that, that they would see that evening. There would also be the main, main feature. And every week there would be, uh, before the main feature, you might also get a serial. You might get a uh, uh, Hopple and Cassidy type uh, a Western serial film that runs 10, 15 minutes. All in all, for your 50 cents, you were sitting in a warm theater for upwards of four hours of entertainment. Mm -hmm. And on a Saturday night, to be nice and warm and not have to stoke the fire and go chop some wood to, uh, to stick it in the fireplace was a real good deal. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, early theaters in that era did not sell food. There was no such thing as a concession stand, no popcorn. That was something that came much later. And I'm sure you've all seen a uh, Laurel and Hardy or, uh, or uh, a similar film where a performer is up on stage and they're throwing rotten tomatoes at the, at the performers. That was real. That was something that actually happened back then because if you were going to spend four hours in the movie theater, admittedly being nice and warm, you were probably going to take a piece of fruit or something, you know, some bread, cheese. Uh, you were going to bring that in a brown bag into the theater to uh, have something to nibble on while you're watching the movie. And of course, when you're picking up uh, vegetables from the garden, tomato garden, uh, you're going to pick the ripest fruit because that's the one that's going to go bad. And so you're looking at this tomato. <laughs> and if you don't like what's happening up on the stage or up on the screen, that tomato may leave your hands and not go into your mouth. So uh, it's, uh, there's, there's a whole history of, uh, of theater organ. Uh, of course, in 1927, the jazz singer came out. It was the first truly synchronized sound and uh, uh, and the image movie. Uh, there were others that came before that were partially synchronized or short, short sections were. But um, in, the, in the 30s, when the sound films were popular, uh, the theater organ fell out of favor. It was no longer needed during the, during the movies. A lot of theaters did use it for entrance music or between music uh, or, or exit music. Uh, but it kind of uh, fell out of favor. Um, the organs were used in, uh, to accompany, uh, when TV came along, the organs were used to uh, accompany uh, uh, the soap operas. 
Uh, they had live action, and they had a live organist sitting at a real live pipe organ in the studio playing the dramatic music to go along with that, which was kind of a holdover from the silent films. Uh, but eventually, the, um, uh, there were a lot of people who were interested in, uh, in theater organ music, and the organs were becoming uh, disused in the, uh, in the theaters. But people still like to entertain themselves. So the electronic instruments, the Hammonds and the, uh, the, uh, the Baldwins and the, uh, nowadays it's the Yamahas and the Casios, uh, became a uh, very popular form of self-entertainment where people could practice their music skills. So that's uh, an abridged, very short history of, uh, of the theater organ. But just bear this in mind. When you see someone like Daryl playing an instrument like this, he's the soloist, he's the accompanist, he's the bass player, he's <clears throat> the percussionist, he's also the arranger arranging which sounds <clears throat> are being played on each keyboard. And you saw uh, Daryl working with the, uh, with the presets here uh, to get the, the special sounds. A lot of those sounds are <clears throat> exaggerated pipe organ sounds on an instrument like this. But uh, when, you, when you think about that, think of, think of some of, when, when you hear some of those sounds, think of uh, what action might be on the screen uh, during a silent film and imagine how those sounds can be used. So that's a, a short history of, uh, of the theater organ. Uh, this, uh, this concert today uh, happened because of Pete Thyssen's uh, uh, persistence in, uh, in uh, getting the instrument here and getting all of us to show up and getting Daryl and, uh, and uh, Don to come. And uh, I, I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thanks also to uh, Central Florida Theater Organ Society and the American Theater Organ Society, uh, which uh, pays for the uh, music licensing that allows us to present music in public. Um, and if you'd like more information about uh, Central Florida Theater Organ Society, we have some brochures on the table back there that uh, explain the theater organ a little bit. And on the back is information about membership on membership dues for $25 a year. And I would also say there is a major theater organ event happening uh, across town on Sunday. I believe it's at 2 o'clock. 2.30. 2.30. I'm sorry, 2.30? Yep. 2.30 at um, Grace Church on uh, Beeline. Bee Ridge. Bee Ridge Road. Bee Ridge. Thank you. Uh, and Mark Herman, a nationally recognized, uh, internationally